Hello, welcome back to today's second weather video. So we're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's second weather video. And that takes around 27th of uh, April. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with extended GFS and ECL ensembles over to around uh, a couple of weeks. And we'll have a look at Surface V2 at the end of the video for May. Uh, we'll have a look at Surface V2 for May at the end of the video. Uh, Gemini Friday has been released, so uh, that's a monthly block out for Japanese and CFS V2 models. As always, on a Friday, we have your monthly block out. And um, rather mixed, um, a rather mixed picture, actually. A lot of uh, fine weather to begin with, but so there's a bit of a deterioration, certainly as we get through to the end of April uh, and into May. So have a look at January Friday and uh, see what's going on uh, there. Now, I've got to tell you that uh, it's a very exciting day at Gaz. Well, this is because we are now taking on channel members. So you can join the channel. You can join Gaz. Well, this is one of subscribing. You can join the channel and uh, become a Gaz Weathervids channel member. So with all the videos and on the channel homepage, there will be this join button next to the subscribe or subscribed button. You just click the join button. And uh, that will take you through to this page where there'll be a video, which is just uploading uh, there. There it is, a video uh, where I explain uh, what chan channel membership is, what it entails. Uh, so for £4.99 per month, uh, you can subscribe to uh, become a Gaz of channel member. You will get access to these loyalty badges that uh, will change colour the uh, longer you are a channel member, all the way up to two years out where you get the gold, um, you get the gold badge. Uh, you'll be able to use custom emojis as well in live chat. Got four of those so far. There's going to be more coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, also, all members, when they come members, they get a shout out in videos. Uh, of course, we'll give you a mention. And uh, there's going to be one members only live stream every month from June and also early access around a week's access to uh, the winter NAO forecast. Well, that's one of those, of course, will be the winter 2020-21 NAO forecast that we shall be releasing. Um, when we release that sometime in the summer. So you'll get access to it like uh, late June, I would have thought, and then it'll go on general release sort of early to mid July at that sort of time. So um, that's how you can become a uh, Gaz of his YouTube channel member. And, uh, yeah, quite a, quite exciting uh, times, really. Uh, this isn't uh, something that YouTube offer to all channels by any means. So um, I think quite proud that somebody at YouTube has noticed us and uh, thought it would be worthwhile uh, offering us uh, the ability to offer you channel membership. And, of course, this is going to help to fund uh, Gaz of his and keep the content online in addition to Patreon and PayPal. The main reason I wanted to do this is that I have noticed over the years, few people have uh, said to me that they would quite like to become patrons. Uh, but they've always been a little bit concerned about the um, pay patron being in dollars. Uh, so this, of course, is in pounds. So um, with patron, you have to pay in dollars. And few people have been a little bit concerned about transaction fees and whatnot with the payment being taken in dollars. So it's just an extra option. It's an extra, uh, extra possibility, extra revenue stream. All revenue streams are very very helpful for gals at the moment whilst uh, ad yields, we are primarily ad funded, ad yields are uh, so low. So we're just going to see how it goes, try it out, see how it works out. We've already had two channel members, big thank you to those two channel members. We are going to give you a shout out in uh, future videos, so stand by, you will get a shout out in uh, coming videos. But yeah, big thank you to our two channel members so far. And um, just have a look, click the join button, have a look at the video, see what it's all about. And, uh, and, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, and if you don't want to join, then that's absolutely fine. You certainly don't have to if you can't afford to. I mean, a lot of people are, are uh, really struggling with this coronavirus crisis. I appreciate that. So if you can't afford to join, if you, uh, if you don't want to join, then that's absolutely fine uh, as well. All of the content that we continue to make and produce at Gaz Webbits will still be available to you. This is all like additional stuff for channel members, but everything that we've done before will still be available to uh, everybody to um, watch as they want it and as they need it. Right, so I thought I'd explain about that at the start of the video. Now, I've got a couple of pictures to show you as well. So I'm a little bit late showing this. Uh, this was uh, sent to me by Liam Kenwood uh, down in Maidstone. 
Um, this is uh, from the 5th of April, I think. So I am a little bit late with this. Sun pillar. Uh, gorgeous shot of a sun pillar there down in uh, Mason. And there's another one. Uh, absolutely fantastic uh, pictures there from uh, Liam. Big thank you to Liam Kenwood for uh, sending those through t to us on uh, Facebook. Uh, and that's another one. Not quite so clear with the sun pillar with that one. But uh, again, fantastic shots. Thank you so much, Liam, uh, for sending those through. Uh, this one was sent through by Lee Stone. Um, this is from Ilfracombe uh, down in Barnstable in uh, Devon. This was sent through at the weekend. Absolutely gorgeous sunshine uh, during the weekend. Look at that fantastic uh, shot of the uh, channel and of the Atlantic Ocean there down at Ilfracombe in uh, Barnstable. Uh, at uh, at the weekend. So um, if you would like to have your weather pictures featured within uh, the videos, then of course you can email them to us at galsweathers at gmail.com or you can share them with us on our social media page, accounts, Facebook, uh, Twitter and whatnot. And uh, when we get a bit of time with videos, I do sometimes get a bit late with them, but when I've got a little bit of time to spare in the videos, then we're more than happy to feature your, uh, your weather pictures in the videos. Big thank you to Liam and for Lee uh, for sharing those with us. Thanks so much both. Right, next thing we're going to look at is the Jeff Best Upper Air Temperature and Precipitation Ensembles. Let's go to the Cheltenham today. This is a suggested location. So, again, if you would like to have your local town or city featured within this part of the video, then all you need to do is ask us again through your social media accounts or on, on YouTube, which I suppose is a social media account as well, isn't it? Or you can email us at gavsweathervids at gmail.com. And again, we are very happy to uh, feature your local town or city in this section of the video. We can't go down to village level yet, I don't think. Um, but we can certainly show you his local town or city. So, uh, red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Cheltenham. And obviously we're very warm at the moment, starting off above average, but there is quite a bit of precipitation to come. Look at that, quite a big rainfall spike, which is something, <coughs> excuse me, something that we haven't had for a little while. So yes, today, tomorrow, there's going to be some heavy rain around. We've already got some quite heavy rain down in the south. That's going to get more widespread uh, through the rest of today, tonight, and into tomorrow morning as well. So there will be some wet weather some parts of the country in the next 24 or so hours. But once that's out of the way, then it goes pretty dry. But let's deal with temperatures first of all. So uh, well above average at the moment with the upper air temperature staying above average really until the last week of April. That's this period just here when temperatures then slide backwards, slide down close to the season average. So there is a cooling trend in evidence there for the last week of April. That was something that was showing up within JMA Friday, both the JMA and the CFS want to turn things quite cold, actually, during the last week of April. I'm not sure the GFS ensembles are going that far. It is a cooling trend, but I'm not sure we would come out colder than average uh, with that. But definitely from, like, a warm opening week, we do see clear signs of a cool down as we go into the more extended uh, range. Precipitation-wise, so there's the big precipitation spike that I was talking about. That's... Um, for uh, heavy showers, longer spells, rain, maybe even a few cracks of thunder uh, this afternoon, this evening, tonight, and into tomorrow morning, and then the rain will fade out. After that, lots of dry weather, really, then, from Sunday through most of next week, looking pretty dry. As we come to the last days of April and the opening days of May, looks like it's going more unsettled again. Uh, then, but certainly once like the wet weather's out of the way for the next 24 hours, then we've got about a week of a week of pretty dry weather coming up. Temperature anomalies from 17th to 25th of April are very close to average. It's not a particularly big deviation either way. And precipitation anomalies are significantly dry on average for central and northern parts of the British Isles. Not quite as dry for England and Wales, but even there, it is a bit dry on average. That does encompass some heavy showers and longer spells of rain in the next 24 hours. So it gives you an idea that once, uh, once the next 24 hours is out of the way, then we really are in a much drier spell of weather. So that's how the GFS is looking for Monday. And by Monday, high pressure is in control over Scandinavia. Winds are in from an easterly direction. 
any rain, bare weather systems are being pushed out of way into the Atlantic. And uh, that's proper spring stuff. That's 20th of April, classic spring weather, high pressure. Oh, Scandinavia, winds in from the east, high and dry, ruling the roost. And this high and dry weather goes on into next week. Low pressure is in the Bay of Biscay. Might threaten some shy rain to the far southwest of the country through the middle of next week. But really, it's high pressure that is in control. Uh, easy winds could be quite chilly through the early part part of next week but then we lose that easily as a high pressure sort of slinks down over the top of the country as we get to around a week's time this is friday 24th april high pressure event is over the top of the country bringing lots of dry weather the east has been cut off so temperatures will warm up probably through the second half of next week moving up towards day 10 High pressure remains in the ascendancy, although gradually beginning to weaken. Low pressure starting to move in from off the Atlantic. It's probably where the drop in the upper air temperatures is coming from in the extended range. As we move in towards the final days of uh, April, then it looks like we're trying to get into a more unsettled pattern. So a bit of high pressure close to the country. I think this is going to a rather more cooler and showery type pattern as we come towards the end of April and the beginning of May. But not overly unsettled. This is as far as we go, certainly the 3rd of May. And even then, high pressure is still more or less around the country. So the Jeff is definitely not going anywhere near as far with this cool and unsettled weather. Uh, that um, that the CFS of the JMA were doing in uh, JMA Friday today. Even into the beginning of May, the uh, GFS is still seeing anticyclonic influences. So there is a bit of a split here between the shorter range and the longer range model output. The long range model output definitely looks cooler and more unsettled for that last week of April and into the opening days of uh, May. GM looks like that. So, again, high pressures over Scandinavia on Monday. We're bringing in this easy wind, which will be quite a cool wind, but it will be relatively dry. Into the middle of next week, high pressure keeps in control, becoming a bit of a northern blocking feature as it starts to edge over towards Iceland and Greenland, actually. Winds remaining from the east. This is classic block stuff, and suffice to say, if this was winter, then we would be... Very, very cold, of course. If you follow the isobars, you can see that the air does originate north of these, plunging down across northern Europe and then being pulled this way with those easterlies. The east won't be particularly cold. It will have a chill to it, I would have thought, uh, on the GM solution. But, uh, I mean, if this was like 23rd of January rather than 23rd of April, we would really know about it. Uh, and then we go into the end of next week. And again, the high pressure is moving up towards Greenland and Iceland, becoming definite sort of northern blocking type of stuff. And as we get to day 10, that's how we're looking. This is a little bit more in line with what the JMA and CFS were showing in that we've got the high pressure up towards Greenland, so we've got blocking. We're cool, bringing in the wind from the north to northeast direction, and low pressure is beginning to form underneath the block. Uh, and of course, these areas of low pressure could threaten quite a lot of wet weather as well. As uh, as well as cool or even quite cold air coming in from the north to north east. So that's much more in line with what we saw in JMA Friday an hour or so ago. And then we've got the uh, east end of as well. So easy winds bring mainly dry weather, but a bit of a chill uh, on Monday. We keep those easy winds going into the middle part of the next week as well. Uh, and then the second half of next week, again, we lose the ECs. So this is more like what the, G, the GFS is showing. Uh, we lose the ECs into the second half of next week. Everything becomes rather slack and flabby. Uh, and temperatures probably start to uh, lift up as well. That could be turning quite warm. Moving up to day 10, then the high pressure pulls out to our west. And we start to bring in like a northeasterly type flow. Probably still relatively dry even then. Um, but cooler uh, with a bit of a chill to that northeasterly wind. But I think the main thing, the main takeaway from the model output within the next week to 10 days, in any case, is a lot of dry weather coming up once the next 24 hours is out of the way. High and dry goes on. Not for the next 24 hours, though. So this is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. Heavy showers, longer spells of rain in the south, gradually pushing northwards through the afternoon and into the evening. Not getting much further north than North Wales and the North Midlands, but there could be some heavy downpours uh, around in some places. And then heading up towards like 
tonight those showers begin to uh, die out starts to turn drier bit of a question mark about tomorrow uh, actually so he said it's mainly dry for tomorrow but other are showing uh, the showers sort of sparking off again tomorrow especially in some central to western areas so like the midlands way or south i think some models are showing things sparking up tomorrow so that remains to be seen the ecm is actually quite dry for tomorrow and then once that's out of the way then obviously we're into those easy winds and through sunny into the early part of next week so just loads and loads of dry weather really uh with the ecm throughout the whole of next week really uh, but it's universally dry every day through the whole of next week. Until we come up towards a very extended range, bring up towards day 10, and then some showers begin to appear. It's 26th of April. Showers beginning to appear across more northern and eastern parts of the country. Uh, and that's how long we get to day 10. So by then, we're putting in a northeasterly wind. There's still a lot of dry weather even in this period, though. So the emphasis is really very much on dry weather. And... Uh, you would have noticed that with, like, today and tonight and possibly tomorrow showers, they're mainly restricted to, like, England and Wales and south of North Wales and the North Midlands. So anywhere further north of that, Scotland to Northern Ireland, most of Northern England, it doesn't look like you're getting much rain for at least the next week, possibly the next 10 days, actually. And even further south, parts of East Anglia, South East England, probably not going to be much in way of rain, rain there in the next 24 Hours. So this is now turning into a very, very prolonged spell of dry weather, even with today's showers down in the south. These options are on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. This gets us to the 27th of April. We have 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure up over Iceland. Low pressure is to our east. Winds are going to be from the north direction. So reasonably dry, high pressure blocking off the Atlantic. We're not bringing the rain bearing weather systems in from the Atlantic Ocean. Bit on the cool side because the winds around the high pressure are coming from the north to northeast. So cool but dry uh, as we come to the end of April. In two weeks time, these are the options that we've got. This is for the 2nd of May. Um, so very, very sort of weak uh, indications there. We've got lower pressure up to the north. Blue colours there, and also to our east. Near normal pressure elsewhere, so that's quite a complicated sort of pattern. Again, it looks rather slack. Maybe just going a bit more showery, but I mean, even then, it doesn't look particularly unsettled. Uh, so perhaps a bit more showery, weaker pressure, allowing showers to spark up, but it certainly doesn't look overly unsettled uh, with that solution. And talking of May, the last thing we're going to look at, of course, is CFS V2 for May. So this is the 700 bit of our height anomaly from the CFS V2 for, uh, for May 2020. And um, this is quite a change of what the CFS was showing uh, a week ago when we looked at this. I think we looked at it on Friday. May have looked at it again within Gaza of his Sunday roundup uh, last weekend. Uh, and it wasn't showing this, but now it's going for very substantial and significant high latitude blocking uh, during May. All of this red up here around Greenland and going to the north of Svalbard and over towards uh like the atlantic side of canada that is all very extensive northern blocking uh which is not a particularly good thing to have uh, in the summer now there's no particular trough of low pressure underneath it except for there there's a trough of low pressure just there sort of off the coast of newfoundland otherwise there's no particular area of low pressure that's evident but with this sort of pattern with blocking uh, around here what you, you normally happen what normally happens is particularly in the summer and um, may is close enough to the summer for this to be a concern is that low pressure will tend to form underneath the block low pressure will tend to form underneath the block due to the just the energy that's within the atmosphere actually is warming up of course as we go into the summer there's a lot of energy available and so underneath that blocking area of high pressure that sits over greenland tend to get low pressure forming underneath it and if that happens, you can find yourself descending into quite a quite a cool month because winds are going to be in from the northeast, as you always get with northern blocking sitting over Greenland. So winds will kind of be from a northerly direction, but at the same time, that will combine with uh, with low pressure to bring quite a bit of rain potentially. 
So that's a bit concerning. Uh, as I say, it's quite a change what the CFS was showing just a week or so ago. So quite where it's getting that northern blocking from. I'm not sure, but it could just be an outlier. It could be something, uh, you know, the, the CFS going off on a tangent. We'll have to have a look at this more regularly uh, to see whether that trend is maintained. Temperature anomalies are no better than average during May 2020. And as usual, there's no particular precipitation signal available. Uh, so it's just coming out with average, which I think really is no signal for precipitation. But if we did get the northern blocking that this is suggesting, particularly centred over green, I would be a little bit concerned about low pressure forming underneath the block. Um, that could uh, prove to be quite a wettish sort of pattern. But uh, again, uh, that's very different what the CFS was showing just a week ago. So it is quite strange how the CFS suddenly is going so strongly for Northern Blind when it wasn't really picking up on that just a week ago. So we should wait and see uh, where that goes. We'll keep monitoring. We'll probably have another look at those month, uh, monthly charts on uh, or in Dow's Web is setting round up on Sunday. Right, that's it for your videos uh, for today. Now, I've got a busy weekend of updates coming up this weekend. So, tomorrow, of course, got weekend forecast. Weekend look ahead, as always, on a Saturday. We're uh, going to have another week to send video updates as well tomorrow. And the CFS versus Beijing Climate Centre mashup. We're going to get those two long range models together and see what they're both showing for the next six months. And that will be the third video up tomorrow evening. Sunday, uh, say we've got Dow's Web is sunny round. And the first video will be the summer analogs update. Uh, that's going to be quite an interesting one because we're going to look at solar minimum summers uh, for that one. So uh, quite an important update in terms of the uh, summer forecast coming up this weekend. Uh, also, an ECMD have Metro France and DWD long range update. So very much towards the longer range stuff this weekend. All of the experimental pushing the envelope type stuff coming up this weekend. And of course, there will be a live stream on the Gas Weather's YouTube channel uh, between 5 and 6 o'clock. Uh, there will be a live stream and... Um, We'll all check in and see how we're all doing uh, during lockdown. So uh, we're still going to stay in. We're still going to self-isolate and uh, keep ourselves indoors as much as possible. But we're going to keep going with the content. As I keep saying, uh, we're going to keep uploading, recording and uploading for as long as we possibly can. We're going to keep the videos coming. And hopefully we're going to keep informing and entertaining you during uh, lockdown. Right then, well, that's all for now for today's video. So thank you so much uh, for watching uh, and that's all for now.